Welcome to the webinar. You have entered as an attendee in Listen Only. Welcome and thank you for joining our webinar, Cinegenix Carolinas Live. Osseo Welcome and thank you for joining our webinar, Cinegenix Carolinas Live, Osteoporosis, the Silent Killer. On the line we have Dr. Brian Maus, Age Management Specialist and Institute Physician at Cinegenix Carolinas, as well as Tiffany Jackson, Cinegenix Carolinas Nutrition Specialist. Please stay tuned to ask your questions of Dr. Brian Maus and Tiffany Jackson after their presentation. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our May webinar, Osteoporosis, the Silent Killer. Uh, May is actually National Osteoporosis Awareness Month. Uh, we want to talk about this crippling bone disease that affects more than 44 million Americans. Often it's called the silent killer because it can develop unnoticed over many years without any symptoms or discomfort until a fracture occurs. So it's estimated one in two women and one in four men over the age of 65 will sustain a bone fracture due to osteoporosis. So we are ready to teach our patients um, how to prevent this so they do not have to end their daily routines and uh, you know lose the ability to play with their grandchildren. Uh, many of us have been led to believe that the key to preventing osteoporosis is increasing calcium and starting on a regimen of pharmaceutical drugs. Uh, tonight you're going to learn that is not the answer. We have Dr. Miles here to talk about all the confusing and conflicting information and what you need to do to strengthen your bones and avoid painful surgeries. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome, Dr. Miles. Well, thank you, Tiffany. I'm excited to present this webinar on osteoporosis because this is a condition that can be prevented. I practiced conventional medicine for many years, and until I became an age management physician here at Cynogenics, I didn't realize the importance of bone mineral density screening in our patients even at a younger age. I certainly do hope there are some men out there listening tonight because osteoporosis certainly merits your attention. It's not all about the women. Uh, it affects men as well. In fact, one about of every four men will sustain an osteoporotic fracture at some time in their lifetime. And here at Cynogenix, we often detect osteopenia or low bone mineral density in our patients even as young as in their late 30s to early 40s. A lot of times when I'm with my patients, uh, I'll talk about osteoporosis and they can usually identify with this condition. I'll use an example of someone's uh, Aunt Betty who was healthy, didn't have to go to the doc doctor, never spent a day in the hospital and suddenly she fell and broke her hip and six weeks later she passed away from a complication uh, related to her osteoporosis. As we mentioned, osteoporosis can sometimes be known as the silent killer because people may not even know they have the disease until they suffer a fracture. There are some surprising statistics about osteoporosis. Uh, for women over the age of 50, uh, they have about a 2.8 percent risk of death related to a hip fracture. And this is equivalent of the uh, risk of death from breast cancer and even four times higher than that from endometrial cancer. Men are affected as well as I mentioned and men over the age of 50 have about a 30 percent risk of experiencing an osteoporotic fracture and this is a similar risk to developing prostate cancer. Yeah, well thank you uh, Dr. Miles for uh, first being here tonight and then second, I just think it's so um, amazing the statistics talking about you know, osteoporosis being pretty much equivalent to the risk of death from cancer. So I think it's something uh, that I hope a lot of our listeners are taking seriously and doing uh, some, some steps to, to prevent. So I want you to go ahead and start and give us a brief overview of what exactly osteoporosis is. Sure, Tiffany. As you can see from the slide on the screen, the word osteo is a Greek word. Uh, osteon and it means bone and porosis which is refers to porous and we see that we have a porous type of bone which is filled with cavities. To understand a little bit more about osteoporosis we're going to cover some basic things but we won't get into uh, a real technical detail but it's important to understand that our bones are not uh, just a skeleton hanging there like you see in the science class or in biology lab. 
the bones are actually a living organ and there's a lot of turnover going on with them over time. There are a few cells that, that are important to mention here. One type is called an osteoblast and this is responsible for producing the bone matrix and, matrix and attracting calcium compounds to form the new bones. There is an opposing cell called an osteoclast which is responsible for resorbing bone and actually repairing the old fragile bone and taking it away to allow for new bones to be remodeled. Yeah, that's really um, neat. I'm glad you mentioned that the bone is a living tissue because that is such an important piece of information for our listeners to understand because I know when I'm talking to patients, a lot of times, you know, they just assume that pieces are hard rocks. Um, you know, I mean, our, their bones and their skeleton are hard shells and hard rocks, but understanding the physiology of it and knowing that it is a living tissue and constantly undergoing a regeneration and renewal um, it's an important way of understanding how to prevent it so you can make sure you're getting the right uh, pieces of nutrition and the right diet and exercise to be able to support that. So before we get into all of, um, all of that, why don't you discuss uh, some of the risk factors that you feel are most important for our listeners to know? Sure, Tiffany. We can see from the slide that there are many risk factors for osteoporosis, and I'm going to focus on a couple of the more important ones tonight, but I do want to mention that sometimes chronic diseases can influence our, our bone mineral density. Oftentimes medications used to treat those de diseases can make bone mineral density worse. And we do see our population is more sedentary and those are factors that are important as well and lifestyle habits as we can see. One of the most important things I do want to talk about are hormones. It's very important that we have optimal hormone balance and that we are not suffering from deficiencies of hormones such as testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, DHEA, growth hormone, and vitamin D, which is called a vitamin, but it's actually a hormone. It's very important in the uh, bone remodeling process as well. Yeah, I know that's one thing here that we see a lot of is hormone imbalances. So, you know, just making sure our listeners out there understand the importance of having those hormones optimized um, is extremely important for preventing bone loss. Um, I know another thing that confuses a lot of our patients out there is all the celebrities on the commercials like Sally Field telling us that we need certain medications to prevent bone loss. So do you want to go ahead and just talk about those medications and some of the side effects? Well, we hear a lot about calcium uh, being important, and certainly through the television ads and media, we hear the importance of calcium, and often you'll see advertisements for some of the pharmaceutical uh, drugs such as Actinil and Fosamax, and they're in a category called bisphosphonates, and there are quite a few other name brands in, the, in this category as well. The interesting thing about these medications, it's hard for the patient to be compliant because they have to be taken on an empty stomach, they have to drink a full eight ounces of water, and then stay upright for 30 minutes afterwards to get even appropriate absorption of the medication. Unfortunately, they'll often suffer, suffer a lot of side effects from the medications, which may include heartburn, headaches, muscle pain, nausea, and some of the more severe things that may occur would be esophagitis or irritation of the esophagus, and they can even develop ulcers of the esophagus. One of the uh, other conditions that we see after we've been evaluating the use of these medications over years would be patients developing osteonecrosis or destruction of the jawbone. And they can also get fractures in some of the areas in their body which we're, we're trying to prevent. In our practice, we do see quite a few people that work in the dental field, such as dentists and um, oral surgeons, and they'll often comment uh, about the condition of their patients that are taking some of these medications to prevent or to treat osteoporosis. Well, I know, uh, you know, we see a lot of patients that do come in on these medications, so I'm glad you were able to review that. And, you know, speaking of just the marketing out there that goes on for the pharmaceutical industry with all of these drugs, you know, the same thing happens on the other end um, with marketing, uh, especially from the dairy industry. Um, we've been led to believe here in our culture, um, you know, from the dairy industry that we need to drink milk from the cradle to the grave to help our bones 
uh, grow uh, when we're young and then to help prevent osteoporosis um, in the future. And, you know, I just wanted to point out here that there are a lot of studies showing that milk consumption does not help prevent osteoporosis. There's one big study out there um, with over 78,000 nurses that drank more than one glass of milk a day and they ended up having a 45% higher hip fracture rate than those who drank less milk. Um, the big picture here is the problem is not lack of calcium, but other factors that affect our body's ability to utilize calcium um, that also causes our body, you know, to lose calcium from the bones. So I wanted just to point out something here and just think about cows for, for a moment. And where do, you know, cows get the calcium they need to make their large, strong bones? You know, it's, it's not from dairy, except when they're very young calves. Um, it's not like they're having and taking a bunch of calcium supplements. They eat grass, which is, you know, compared to low in calcium, but very high in magnesium and other minerals. Um, another thing I wanted to point out uh, that's a good indicator of, you know, whether or not uh, milk and the calcium uh, is uh, coming from the milk, uh, if you're looking at a population, um, growth here, look at the chart, you'll see that the highest dairy consumption uh, in countries such as Sweden, New Zealand, United States, their number of hip fractures is 50 times greater um, than countries that have low consumption of dairy. Um, and, you know, this is done, um, this is Harvard research that's out there that, you know, showing a direct correlation between dairy intake um, and, and hip fractures. So uh, I just think that's important for people to know because if you're just watching TV and going by the information we're fed through a uh, TV screen, you would be led to believe that just having milk in your diet would give you enough calcium to protect your bones, and the exact um, op opposite is true. So um, I just wanted to point that out. Well, that makes me a little bit uh, curious, Tiffany. How can we ensure that our patients get enough calcium in their diet if they're not drinking milk? Um, well, from the screen you can see I listed here uh, plant sources of calcium. Um, these are actually in order from higher uh, to lower amounts of calcium per calorie. Um, the big one's molasses. Uh, you can do a lot of dark uh, leafy greens. The salad greens are one of your highest sources. Also your cruciferous vegetables, your cabbage, broccoli, um, and then green beans, cucumbers, peas, soybeans, squash, most uh, types of beans, and then some other fruits, uh, your kiwi, your tomato, and maple syrup actually is a pretty good one that has a decent amount of calcium in it. So the big point here that I just want our listeners to understand is don't rely on milk as your you know, form of calcium and say, I don't need to worry about osteoporosis because I'm drinking milk every day. That is, that is not um, the answer. You really do need to be eating a more balanced uh, plant-based diet. Um, and while we're on the topic of talking about what we're drinking and beverages, I did want to also mention um, about sodas and carbonated beverages. Um, so one thing that a lot of patients don't understand is in sodas and carbonated drinks, they add um, what a, a substance called phosphoric acid. Um, and this phosphoric acid uh, can have a dramatic effect on bone health. It's actually a clear, colorless, odorless liquid got this syrupy consistency. They add it as an acidifying agent to colas to give them this tangy flavor. Um, and it's extremely acidic, which actually ends up leaching calcium out of our bones. So, you know, it's also, when you really start looking into phosphoric acid, it's commonly used for rust removal. It's just something that if you um, are trying to prevent bone loss, sodas and carbonated drinks are one of the last things you want to consume. And then also, in these um, carbonated and beverages, they use a add artificial flavor um, that is formulated from formaldehyde. And formaldehyde it can be extremely detrimental to bone growth, um, and you know it, it it just disrupts the whole cycle of of the bone formation. So you're always trying to remember renew and rebuild healthy bones. So if you're drinking these sodas and carbonated beverages. Um, you're totally disrupting the process. So, um, and also they have very high sugar content, which that could be a whole other webinar, um, the inflammation and inflammatory effect that sugar causes with on, um, on bones. So those are just some things um, in your diet, and those are just drinks. So I just wanted, you know, being the nutritionist here to point out these are some things as, you know, we get older and we really are concerned about preventing this disease that you could 
um, you could do. Um, so also, uh, Dr. Miles, I know we see here uh, patients come in uh, to our practice and they're already taking a lot of, you know, different supplements and a lot of them are taking calcium supplements. Um, but when we do our hormone workup and we do our uh, bone density testing, we find that, you know, they do have um, a high risk for osteoporosis. So I just thought maybe you could talk for a minute um, you know, why, why is that? Why do some people that are taking calcium um, at a high risk for developing the disease? Well, we can see from the slide that uh, calcium certainly is important, but there are a host of other nutrients that are important for uh, bone mineral density. When we talk about calcium, we do know that patients diagnosed with osteoporosis, they need about uh, 1,500 milligrams of calcium uh, per day. It's also important that they're taking the proper form of calcium uh, for absorption. Uh, and we've heard, you know, again in the media, television ads, maybe from your doctor's office, that uh, they might tell you to take antacids such as Tums or Rolaids because they have a good source of calcium. Unfortunately, it's a source that's poorly absorbed. Calcium does come in many different forms, and a, a, a better absorbing form of calcium is calcium citrate, which is water soluble. It can be taken at any time. And certainly is the uh, supplement of choice for patients that may have suppressed gastric acid secretion. And those would be people that might be taking other antacids or on proton pump inhibitors, which are commonly prescribed for, for heartburn and uh, conditions with the stomach and the esophagus. Also, we see vitamin, vitamin D up there. And uh, it's it's very important in the bone remodeling process and prevention of osteoporosis. It also helps promote the intestinal absorption of calcium and regulates how much calcium enters into the bone and leaves the bone. So it's very important as well. Another one very important is vitamin K. And it's uh, a cofactor for building the protein matrix uh, in bones and also uh, is important for the absorption uh, of vitamin D. Sometimes you'll have a patient that you're giving high doses of vitamin D, but their blood levels don't seem to correlate with the amount that they are taking. And oftentimes we'll add a vitamin K2 to the compound and their absorption will increase. Also, there are other antioxidant vitamins such as vitamin C, vitamin E that are important in the, uh, the bone remodeling process and uh, helping to increase bone mineralization and also suppress some of the activity of the resorbing cells that are in the bones. Also, we have some trace minerals such as magnesium, silicon, and boron, which are important in this process as well. Yeah, well, I'm really glad you mentioned the vitamin K because there's a ton of research out there on vitamin K, uh, you know, along with vitamin D, and not only bone health, but in atherosclerosis. So I thought maybe you might just want to comment on that briefly. Sure. Um, people might not realize that atherosclerosis and osteoporosis are somewhat intimately related. In fact, they're kind of conditions which, which mirror image each other. Um, where we see in osteoporosis, it's characterized by a loss of calcium from the bones and shifting the balance and taking them from a good, hard, stable bone to a diseased or soft bone that, that fractures easily. In contrast, in atherosclerosis, what we see is an influx of calcium in the arterial wall, taking those compliant soft vessels and making them firm, causing a condition known as hard, hardening of the arteries. Vitamin K is essential in preventing calcium accumulation in the arterial walls, and people with low levels of vitamin K certainly are at increased risk for developing calcification in their arteries. So we can see that uh, vitamin D and vitamin K they both work synergistically for helping bone mineralization and decreasing risk for atherosclerosis. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one thing we are really excited here um, at Synogenics because we have a heart disease and stroke prevention program where we actually are able to measure the level um, of the plaque, you know, that, that forms in the arteries. So um, I know a lot of our patients have been getting that tested and, you know, we're able to feel like we're really helping them um, with uh, preventing, you know, heart disease as well. So uh, glad you mentioned that. Um, 
Let's see. I, the next thing let's talk about is, you know, if someone was to come to our office, like, what? How do we test for osteoporosis? Um, can you just kind of walk us through what um, what specialized testing we do here? Well, part of our comprehensive evaluation does include a body composition analysis on an instrument called a DEXA scan. And with this instrument, we're able to determine the bone mineral density, and it's a standardized uh, test. And we, we compare the patients to a large population of young, healthy, 30-year-old patients and come up with a number called a T-score. And a T-score of zero correlates to the median range of young, healthy people, again, at about the age of 30. And if you have a bone mineral density that's one standard deviation below the median, then you have a condition known as osteopenia. This is just about the level that if you look at a plain film x-ray on a view box, you can just detect visibly that there is some decreased bone mineral density. If you have a standard deviation of minus 2.5 below the median, then you actually do have osteoporosis. And the significance of this is that your risk for fracture goes up significantly. Yeah, that's a good overview. I know, too, um, you know, not everybody are able to get these DEXA scans. So I think it's important for, you know, patients to understand, you know, this is not considered a medical necessity in um, the conventional medical world. And, you know, usually when they're doing DEXA scans, it's a little too late. Do you want to comment on that briefly? Sure. I've really uh, been influenced by uh, the patients that we see here because we do the bone mineral density testing on all of our patients, and it's kind of opened my eyes to realizing that uh, in the osteoporosis realm that men are being neglected, and we're, we're actually looking at women too late. Uh, my belief is that we should be looking at people in, a, in more of a screening process, probably starting in their 40s, just to see even if at that point if they are already at risk or have developed some low bone mineral density. Oftentimes we don't think about osteoporosis until we're in our 60s or 70s, and in fact it, it may be very advanced disease in a patient, especially if they develop, they develop it at an early age like we do see many times. Great. Well, um, what can you tell our listeners out there about what they can do and what you would recommend them to do to prevent, um, you know, osteopenia and ultimately preventing osteoporosis? Well, certainly it's important to know what your numbers are. and. It's important to have a thorough evaluation. We need to focus on the hormone levels and getting the hormones optimized. That would include testosterone, estrogen, growth hormone, DHEA, and vitamin D, as we mentioned, which is also a hormone. And it's important also to be involved in a good nutrition program, making sure that you're getting the proper nutrients and that you're taking supplements if needed to improve uh, the micronutrients and other vitamins that we discussed. Also, it's very important that you're involved in an exercise program, which includes uh, weight-bearing exercises and resistance training. Those would be the types of exercises that actually pull and tug on your bones and stimulate uh, bone growth and improve bone mineral density. Sometimes we'll see a patient who actually can be very fit from a from a standpoint of their heart and their lungs, and they may be doing swimming and extensive uh, road bicycling and, and feel very healthy and look very good, but in fact they're not stimulating their bones and oftentimes can have low bone mineral density even in someone who is a training athlete. Yeah, that's really interesting. Well, um, I think we are almost out of time here, so I just wanted to, you know, kind of recap. And um, for those of you out there that are listening um, and interested in preventing osteoporosis, we would highly encourage you, you know, to call our office and understand um, our, you know, multifaceted approach and really make sure um, that you are working with a doctor to optimize your hormones to make sure you're using the DEXA scan to get a very good, clear evaluation um, of where your bones are at, making sure you're working with a nutritionist to make sure you have the right forms of the vitamins that are getting absorbed, make sure you're, you know, eating the right um, fruits and vegetables to help um, keep your bones healthy, and then also working with an exercise physiologist uh, to make sure you're doing the correct exercises. So that is what our program entails. Uh, we really, really um, 
enjoy our jobs here. We see uh, people's health improve dramatically. Um, we're always getting success stories. And um, I know, uh, Dr. Miles, you see a lot of uh, patients that can actually, you know, reverse this bone mineral density. So. Um, and strengthen their bones. So we encourage you to call and learn more about our office, and now we are going to take some questions. Thank you. Dr. Miles and Tiffany will now be accepting questions from the audience. If you would like to ask a question, please use the chat feature located on the meeting dashboard. Okay, we have a question coming in. Um, what if I already have osteoporosis? Could I benefit from your program? Good question, and we talked about that a little bit. Uh, once we optimize the hormones, the nutrients, the calcium, and uh, get people on, on a, a regular exercise regimen, we consistently see in our patients, after one to two years, uh, increased uh, bone mineral density, even in people that we diagnose with osteoporosis and osteopenia. And we usually reevaluate our patients on a yearly basis, and uh, again, consistently see improvements from year to year in their bone mineral density. Okay, great. Um, we have another one coming in. My grandson has scoliosis, operation steel rods. Problem is his bones are not regenerating like a young person. What could he take to make his bones stronger? He is age 18. Well, we've been talking all along uh, about hormones, about the nutrients, about the calcium, and certainly, again, it's important uh, for him to be evaluated just to, to see uh, where he might have some deficiencies to know what his, his overall bone mineral density is. On the DEXA scan, we don't just focus on one area, but we do an overall bone mineral density on that test, and certainly it's going to be important to look at his uh, nutrition and uh, balance of nutrition and whether or not he's getting the proper type of exercise. But these are things that certainly can improve. Um, it wouldn't be likely for him to have a hormone deficiency at that age, but it certainly should be looked into. Okay, another one that we have, what form of calcium should I take if I can't take some? Um, good question. Uh, there are, you know, a bunch of different forms of calcium out there available. Um, we've used uh, some different combinations, dicalcium malate, uh, calcium glycinate, uh, chelate. Those are more absorbable. And then a really common one uh, that we use, that's a water-soluble form that Dr. Miles mentioned earlier, is uh, called calcium citrate. So then again, I would never recommend just the patient going out and taking just calcium. It's extremely important to really get a balance um, of these vitamins and minerals to get opt optimal uh, support to building the bone matrix. So, For more information or if you have any questions, please feel free to contact Dr. Brian Miles directly at 843-577-8484 or email him at bmiles at cinegenics-carolinas.com. You can register online at www.cinegenics-carolinas.com. Cinegenics Carolinas is open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Again, you can reach Dr. Brian Miles directly at 843-577-8484. Email him at bmiles at cinegenics-carolinas.com or register online at www.cinegenicscarolinas.com. Thank you.